Welcome back, friends. Today's episode of Dark Matters was chosen by the patrons who help financially contribute to this channel. In light of YouTube's decision to demonetize almost every new Dark Matters and Nameless episode, I am beyond grateful at all of the support for this channel, whether you're a patron or you purchase merchandise or you simply watch or share the videos. Thank you. Without you, these stories of the missing and nameless and injustice would go unheard. You are just as much a part of this as I am. You ensure that they are not forgotten. Many key figures are involved in solving crimes. Detectives, volunteers, families, witnesses, and forensic specialists. A bright, bubbly girl on the verge of collegehood held ambitions to become one of those forensic specialists until she vanished. Today on Dark Matters, the disappearance of LaQuanta Riley. Pam Riley, now Pam Riley Bolden, was no stranger to hardship. She lost her mother in a domestic dispute in 1972, and just over a decade later, was pregnant at 16. She gives birth on February 26, 1984, to her first daughter, LaQuanta Nichelle Riley, and quickly realizes she's in over her head. Luckily, Pam's aunt Katie Smith takes LaQuanta under her wing, Mother and daughter communicated through letters, Pam watching LaQuanta grow up through hand-delivered school pictures. Family called LaQuanta Little Caterpillar in her infancy, then Quanta and Quanta as she entered adolescence. As LaQuanta grew, so did her family. She became the eldest of four brothers and one sister named Kamisha. Unfortunately, Kamisha passed away in 1996, devastating the Riley family. After losing her sister, 12-year-old LaQuanta wrote, To my little sister Kamisha, I love you so much. Even though I didn't get to say goodbye, I still love you. Now that you're gone, life will never be the same, but I know, and everyone knows, that you went to a bigger and greater place. I'm happy that you're happy. I love you, Kamisha. Though LaQuanta had lost her sister, she was grateful to be surrounded by three supportive women. Her great-aunt Katie, her mother Pam, and her cousin. LaQuanta also leaned on her faith and prayer to guide her through trying times. Times that did little to dampen her spirit. Bubbly, compassionate, and eager to experience life at its fullest, LaQuanta enjoyed cooking and music, playing the clarinet from middle school to the end of high school. LaQuanta made education a top priority. She studied hard, excelling in biology, and earning herself a place on the honor roll a majority of years. That hard work paid off. Upon graduating from Redden High School in Stone Mountain, Georgia, she had a full-ride scholarship. She planned to enter the criminal justice field to become a forensic scientist. But first, she needed to sort out her living situation. In 2003, 19-year-old LaQuanta lived in an apartment in Eufaula with a high school friend. But around Thanksgiving, things turned sour. The exact situation isn't known, but after a disagreement with her roommate, LaQuanta decided to move out. On December 5th, she goes back to the apartment to gather her belongings. Later that same day, she phones her mother, upset, and asks for a ride to Montgomery where Pam lives. Wanting to be the mother she couldn't be as a teenager, Pam wants to know what's wrong, but also doesn't want to pry. In the end, she decides to give LaQuanta space. She doesn't ask what's wrong, but still can't make it to Eufaula. LaQuanta made other arrangements to get to Montgomery, where she moved into her aunt Katie's home with her cousin, Stacy Riley, just three miles away from Pam. Aunt Katie was staying in Georgia with relatives, but she had one rule for the girls living under her roof. 
no male visitors. LaQuanta complained to her mother about the rule, but Pam told her daughter to listen to her aunt Katie. LaQuanta's response, Oh, mama, that is what you would say. Sunday, December 7th, 2003. Two days after LaQuanta comes home from Eufaula, the whole family is waist deep in Christmas planning. Family tradition has everyone choosing special Christmas outfits. LaQuanta decides on a new brown and white swirled top and jeans for the upcoming festivities, but still hasn't found the perfect pair of shoes. That day, Katie gets a call from her great-niece concerning an argument LaQuanta had with Katie's son in regards to the no-male-visitors rule. Katie tells LaQuanta not to worry about the disagreement. It's the last time she speaks to her niece. That night, around 11.30 p.m., LaQuanta gets into a dark green four-door car at her residence. The driver takes her to her mother's house, three miles away, so she can get a jacket. One of LaQuanta's younger brothers answers the door and doesn't recognize the car, similar to a Ford Taurus or Chevrolet Caprice idling in the drive. He can't see the driver, and when he asks who's behind the wheel, LaQuanta tells him it's a friend she met from around the street. Shortly after, LaQuanta leaves in the stranger's car and is never seen again. Three days later, LaQuanta has gone silent and hasn't returned, something completely out of character. So, Pam worriedly reports her daughter missing. Family immediately begins searching, calling friends, family, and acquaintances to try and track LaQuanta down. If anyone knows where she is, they aren't talking. Aunt Katie makes a hasty return to Montgomery, only to find, five days later, no progress has been made. According to Lieutenant Huey Thornton of the Montgomery Police Department, detectives checked with local hospitals and jails and put a lookout on the National Crime Information Center for LaQuanta. There was no indication of foul play, nor that she left of her own free will, and there were no substantive leads to follow. Detective Dante Gordon, who worked the case in 2005, said the initial investigation looked into all of the information Pam provided and that LaQuanta left behind money and her purse. This was a red flag for family as it pointed to a possible abduction. Gordon claimed none of LaQuanta's friends or acquaintances had any desire to speak to police about the missing woman. With no indication of foul play, police couldn't legally force anyone to talk. Despite the lack of leads, there were two strange incidents following the disappearance. LaQuanta's name was linked to an apartment rented in Stone Mountain, Georgia, where she'd graduated from high school. But while the renter name matched LaQuanta's, it's unknown if this was an individual with the same name, someone using LaQuanta's identity, or the missing girl herself. Pam traveled to Stone Mountain, searching for answers. Pam spoke with a two-year resident of the apartment complex, and after showing him LaQuanta's picture, she received unsettling information. The resident claimed LaQuanta lived just down the hall and had recently asked to use his phone after she'd been in some sort of fight or argument. While the nature of the dispute is unknown, the woman reportedly left a few days prior to Pam's arrival. It is unknown if this lead was connected to LaQuanta's disappearance or if LaQuanta was ever present at the apartment complex. But this isn't the most chilling sign of Pam's missing daughter. Following LaQuanta's disappearance, Pam finds a message on her home phone, and what she hears doesn't dispel any anxiety. The exact day Pam received the message isn't clear. Conflicting reports place the call anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks following LaQuanta's disappearance. Pam believes LaQuanta left the message. On the call, she could hear her daughter crying and saying either, leave me alone or let me go home. Then a male voice says LaQuanta's name and the call disconnects. After Pam tells police about the message, she says two detectives made an audio copy of the voicemail, but never traced the call. 
Detective Gordon had heard of the message, but a copy of it was not provided to him. Yet, police considered the voicemail alarming enough for Sergeant Scott Martino to make a press release voicing their worry that LaQuanta was in danger due to this recent development. The audio of that call has never been publicly released, and if a copy does exist, police keep it under wraps. Pam listened to the message on repeat until a power outage deleted it from the machine. It is unknown if the call has led to any answers for LaQuanta's case. Other leads take detectives to dead ends, including an inmate who said he witnessed someone throw LaQuanta into a pond in Prattville. The unnamed inmate later backpedaled, admitting he fabricated parts of his story. With a lack of investigative direction, family has an agonizing wait for answers, one that still isn't over. The false leads and horrific rumors surrounding her daughter's disappearance are almost too much for Pam to handle. She repeatedly revisits her one regret, not asking what happened between LaQuanta and her roommate that night in Eufaula. For a while, she stops answering the phone, not wanting to hear from anyone unless they'd found her daughter. That call never came. Depression takes hold, but Pam pushes through the pain on the anniversaries of LaQuanta's disappearance, posting flyers and holding vigils. On LaQuanta's birthdays, the community releases balloons to let her know, if she's still out there, she has not been forgotten. Pam's sadness is tinged with anger. She feels like the police didn't do enough, claiming no one checked the phone records or searched the home. Then there's frustration that no Amber Alert equivalent exists for missing adults. And while police say they were still actively investigating the case, they still had no concrete leads. For Pam, when Project Jason enters the picture, there's a little hope or at least some comfort in community. Project Jason is a nonprofit founded by Kelly Jolkowski, mother to Jason Jolkowski, who went missing in 2001 and is still missing to this day. The distraught mother turned her pain into aid, providing the families of missing loved ones resources, aid in spreading awareness, and most of all, community. One of the cases they adopted was the Quantas. The program seemed to inspire Pam. She later developed the Riley Relief Foundation with a focus on aiding families of missing people of Alabama, which includes LaQuanta. She hopes the foundation serves as a place of emotional support for those who feel lost because they have lost one of their own. She said, we are going to be the voices for them. Whatever we can do to get the faces of the missing in the public and to be a support to the families left behind to grieve. In 2014, the Montgomery Police Department said LaQuanta's case was still open, with a new detective recently assigned to it. The statement from Chief Ernest Finley reads, for almost 13 years, the Montgomery Police Department has been investigating the disappearance of LaQuanta Riley. Her family has never given up, and we have never given up. We have worked every lead with multiple detectives through the years, and we have just initiated a cold case partnership that will look anew at Miss Riley's disappearance as a joint endeavor with MPD. We also want to appeal again to the public, to that person or persons who may know something that will help us bring this long-standing investigation to a close for the Riley family. LaQuanta's brothers can't bear to be in the room when their sister is brought up, and both mother figures continue to hope their girl will return to them one day. Her aunt Katie said, If she did leave because of something she thought we wouldn't be understanding about, we want her to know we love her, no matter what, bad or good, I love her. Prayers and faith that her daughter is alive has kept Pam going. She will continue to believe so, quote, until God allows me to know something different. On June 25th of 2018, members of the Riley Relief Foundation gathered in the parking lot of the Montgomery Police Department to read off the names of Alabama's missing. 
Pam urges anyone with information on any of the cases to come forward, saying, It might be that one little word, that one little sentence you saw or overheard. Someone has to know something. Somebody saw something. She needs to come home. LaQuanta was 19 years old when she vanished on December 7, 2003. If alive today, she would be 34 years old. She's a black female with black hair and brown eyes, pierced ears, and a pierced tongue. She wore a silver barbell tongue piercing when she went missing. She has a scar on her nose in addition to two tattoos, one on her bicep that reads R.I.P. or Rest in Peace Misha for her sister and her first name tattooed on the opposite bicep. Her nicknames were Quana and Quanta. At the time she disappeared, she was 5 feet 8 inches tall and 200 pounds, last seen wearing a yellow and green Echo brand shirt, stonewashed blue jeans, green and yellow Reebok sneakers, and a silver chain bracelet. There is a reward for information on LaQuanta's whereabouts. If you have any information on the circumstances of her disappearance, please contact the Montgomery Police Department at 334 625 2831. You can also contact Crime Stoppers at 334 215 STOP or Secret Witness and leave an anonymous tip at 334 262 4000. A special thanks to the Patreon family. The names you see on screen are just some of the people who financially contribute to this channel. Whether they are passionate about cases like LaQuanta's or the other dark content on this channel, their support cannot be overstated. If you are interested in supporting the channel, information is in the description, but even if you only continue to support by watching, thank you. Thank you for giving LaQuanta's case a moment of your time, and my heart goes out to her family and her friends. They've gone too long without answers, and we all hope closure can begin soon. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge Pam and Kelly Jalkowski, who have never stopped looking for their missing children, and through unimaginable grief, have somehow found it in themselves to turn their pain, frustration, and anger into something that aids others in the same situation. Thank you for being a light for your children and for others in a time when you felt surrounded by the dark. And no matter what you choose to believe or what you speculate, I ask you only for respect in the comments below, both for LaQuanta and her family. And remember, though these may be dark matters, the darkness always matters. Thank you for watching the video. Exposure to cases such as LaQuanta's is highly important. Thanks to all who support by becoming patrons, buying merchandise, and receiving these cases openly and respectfully. Stay safe, friends, and have a good night.